Do you want to see titanium bolts break in granite on this episode of How Not to Bolt Bust? Hi, I'm Ryan Jinks and welcome to my gear room. Today, we are going to show you some of our favorite tests, these titanium bolts that we did in granite with Hilti V3 500 epoxy. Basically, it's the best bolt and glue combo that you can put in literally anywhere. We are going to share in this episode tension and in shear because our, our results were so similar. Now, let me tell you a little bit about the titanium bolts. These are from titanclimbing.com and Martin Roberts is the guy who makes these. He is a also a bolting nerd like us, but he really nerds out on titanium and knows his stuff. These are the world's first certified titanium bolts and they are proof tested to 12 kilonewtons every single one of them. Each bolt is stamped with a date so it can be traced back to the original raw materials that were used on it for absolute quality control. And the MBS that's stamped on it is 30 kilonewtons. And the actual breaking strength we've got, you'll see, is much higher. MBS is kind of an interesting thing because some companies put their MBS right at what they break at. And other people, like Martin, uh, put it significantly lower than what you can commonly get out of these. MBS is minimum breaking strength. So technically, it's the lowest number you would ever get when something breaks. But as we have learned on Slack Snap and Bolt Busters, it's not always the case. And especially if you start uh, using them, obviously, outside of what they were intended for. But they try to isolate variables when they do lab tests and try to come up with MBS. And, and I understand how you, know, you need to eliminate variables to create standards so you can compare one product with a different product. But uh, this MBS is definitely lower than what we were actually getting here on our bolt buster tests. A neat feature about these bolts is when you hammer them in, you can see how it gets a little bit wider here at the top. And when you, this, these go in 14 millimeter holes, by the way. Once they get, uh, gets all the way in, it gets pretty tight right here. So if you're going to install these in a rock that is slightly overhanging or completely overhanging, that your bolt doesn't just fall out. We actually had um, use some solid leg bolts one time at just the slightest incline and it just wanted to slide out and I was trying to duct tape it to sandstone, it was awful. It's really nice when you have a little bit of an interference when you're installing bolts in case it's not perfectly this way or like highlighting this way. The wave bolts have some interference, but there's like a lot of interference and it's basically bending the bolt as you install it and kind of twisting it because of the shape of it. Uh, this has just, just enough interference to be useful. Now let's talk about longevity. These do not last forever. They only last around 200 years. Uh, we actually don't know how many hundreds of years it'll last because, uh, well, they haven't been around that long. However, titanium is uh, the right material to use, especially when near the ocean and any other area that is prone to corrosion. There's been a lot of limestone near the ocean in Thailand where uh, stainless steel bolts have basically rusted through in just a few years to the point of being quite dangerous. And so this was actually the solution for um, mainly that, but also other things around the world where bolts are getting compromised pretty quickly as stainless steel ones. Zinc plated bolts are shit. And basically for indoor climbing gyms, you don't want to use them outside. They will corrode pretty fast. And especially if you mix it with a stainless steel washer, hanger, bolt, like one of the components is stainless, it'll corrode it even faster. You can learn about all that stuff in the Bolting Bible that we are currently, Bobby and I are currently uh, rewriting right now. And we were kind of like mind fuck. So we took a break and decided to film this one. But anyways, check that out. That's gonna be, um, it's on slackademics.com right now. I'm gonna be moving it over to hownottohighline.com. It's gonna be revised so it's climbing and highline friendly and you'll be able to read all the stuff about bolts and how they work. But these things will last a long, long time and that's what you want if you're going to put in basically man-made shit in our beautiful outdoor nature that we all share. These bolts run around nine or 10 British pounds, around 13 or 14 US dollars, and I think 10 or 11 euros. Um, they are a little bit more expensive than, okay, so they're more expensive. However, they feel like quality. 
something I like about these bolts is the fact that it's a uh, solid continuous rod that goes all the way around and that there's no structural welds to try to bury under glue. Now it is recommended these are installed with a notch. A notch will prevent fatigue. The closer this bolt is to the rock, the less bending it will do. So if the bolt is installed like this, it will be a lot stiffer. And over, we hope, 200 years that it lasts, that uh, if it's only in that far, that it would bend, 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 creating this fatigue over time. And we're not actually quite sure how long it would last. We don't want to find out the hard way. So uh, it is recommended that it is notched and looks like that. And that way it lasts possibly longer. However, it's not super necessary. And because we were only pulling once, we did not in this test do any notches. We will do a series of three in shear uh, in our next bolts breaks that we are gonna do with a notch to see if it creates a difference and to see how it breaks when it breaks. So when we tested these in shear, we got 45 kilonewtons, 51 kilonewtons, and 44 kilonewtons. And it was uh, pretty similar when we tested it in tension and we got 42 kilonewtons, 42 kilonewtons, and 47 kilonewtons. And rarely is the tension strength the same as the shear strength. And you can see in the brake test that the uh, bolts bend quite a bit before, that they, before they snap. I have found that some products, mostly soft goods, uh, don't quite break at MBS because if you use them a certain way, it lowers the, the value. And usually metal, uh, it can only be used certain ways. And so when you use in those ways, it should be the MBS. Sometimes they're not, but this is consistently higher and I am pretty stoked on these. So they're strong, they last a long time and they are nice to install and good quality. You can see here that they come in two different lengths, 80 millimeters and 110 millimeters. What we tested in the granite was 80 millimeters. And as you can see, when this part is breaking, it doesn't matter how long it is. But if you're gonna do with something in a softer rock or a layered rock, you would wanna go with something longer. It gives it a little bit more to grab onto. But we did do quite a few tests in Moab and did it in sandstone. And we found that a lot, I mean, it seems like it's softer rock, but it's actually pretty good quality sandstone. And our short uh, bolts were breaking um, up here and not uh, coming out of the hole in a lot of situations. You can ch uh, make sure you are following and liking our channel because that way you can see those episodes as they come out soon. We just got back from Moab. We'll be releasing that over time and it'll all be on the Bolting Bible, which will be eventually on HowNotToHighline.com. One of the unique things about our Bolt Buster project is it is completely an independent project. Martin did not sponsor this uh, video with free bolts or money or anything like that. We have purchased everything ourselves. It is really nice when you guys donate because it does come basically out of my pocket. But I like being independent and being able to shit on things I want to shit on and promote things that I like just because I think they're great products. But uh, this is not just something that I got free bolts or paid to do. This is not sponsored. Since Titan Climbing is based in the UK, the wrapbolting.com is the US distributor for these bolts. So if you're in the US and would like to purchase some titanium bolts, wrap bolting is your place to go. Why are we doing bolt busters, you ask, if all the bolts are breaking super good enough? Well, it's because we as Highliners did not know how strong bolts really were. And so we're putting in too many in my opinion, and we only need two or three on either side of our Highlines. I also am finding how little we actually know about bolts as I dig deeper and deeper in my research. We do know a lot, but not, not enough in my opinion. You can check out our other episode where we show for five minutes over 50 slow motion brake tests and you can learn how bolts break, which I think is super interesting because you really learn a lot about the nature of them. And when you see them out in uh, the wild, out on your climbing crags and your high lines, that you would be able to predict how they would break even though you might not know exactly what the number might be. Because a lot of things bend before they snap and a lot of things snap where you're not expecting them. Bolts just don't get pulled out of rocks when you pull them hard enough. And that's what we're learning here at Bolt Busters. We do wanna promote that you do not bolt if you do not have to. You do get the same satisfaction as graffiti artists get when you see your work on public land. 
However, even though you will probably get that feeling if you bolt, please don't do it for your ego. Please make sure it's going to benefit our climbing crags or our high lines areas. Otherwise, put in removable bolts or rig all natural or try to use as much trad gear as possible. So we promote not bolting here at Bolt Busters and on the Bolting Bible. And if you are going to install bolts and compromise rocks that have been there for a long, long time until you showed up, please put in something that'll last a long, long time. So in five, 10 or 20 years, we're not having to try to figure out how to remove these and reinstall safer ones. You can see how when we were angle grinding our bolts off, how cool it was in slow motion to film the sparks that were flying. Titanium sparks a lot more than stainless steel does. Now, keep in mind that we go to areas that are in the absolute middle of nowhere. We are able to grind down flush with the rock, put a little glue over the top dust, and make sure the areas that we test all this in are left as good as we found them. We hope by our efforts that less bolting is done around the world and better bolting is done so we don't have to replace them as often, keeping our rocks that we do see more pristine.